VIP Access, VIP Access. with Aniko and Africa Loud. Welcome to VIP Access. This is episode six of my podcast and YouTube show. I'm very happy to be talking to an artist who I love. I know every one of my introduction is always saying that I love this artist, but honestly, this is one of Kenya's brightest stars when it comes to pop music and R&B. I'm going to add dancehall to the mix because, you know, there's a way when he sings and the way he styles brings out the music, there's always like a dancehall or a bounce kind of element. It's such an honor for me to finally sit down with this brilliant artist, creative, and set to take the airwaves and the industry in the coming years. Brian Nadra, karibu sana. The honor is all mine, Nico. <laughs> How are you? Mzuri. Asha mini po salama tu kabisa. Wow, it's so nice to see you. Those were many compliments. I haven't heard that many compliments in a while. Unajua mina ishi ushago, sasa ningumu. First of Jirani all. Jirani yangu wata imba. First of all, <laughs> Twanzie, this quiz you shall go because Brian Nadra is signed to Decimal Records. That's how I actually got to know about you when your first singles came out, Leo yes. and Matwana. Yes, and, and Matwana. I was like, who's this talented young boy? Then Musioka was telling me, yeah, Nikona artist wangu nini nini. So I think we've been really cool since then. Yes, yes. That was 2016 16, or 17? 2016, Musho Musho, but mostly 2017 yeah. as well. Yeah, so we met, you know, mm. we did some media tours here yeah, and there. Yeah, I remember, yeah. It was a really... For the Decimal launch event. There was launch, a decimal launch the event when we were launching yes. the label yes. uh, together with Musioka and Nabona and the, Nabona rest, of the, and the rest of the crew. Yeah. So I think from there onwards, we were just waiting for the album. And I was just like, I can't wait to hear how a Nadra album is going to sound. Mm -hmm. Now you dropped an album last year and then in between that period. Yes. Um, well, not last year. The album came out in 2021. Yes, yes. Um, and May. last year, there was an album by The Decimators. Mates, yes. Yeah. And in between your album and The Decimators, you also moved to, to Shags? Yes, to Shago. Um, it's, a, it's a nice experience. You know, like, um, I'd been in Nairobi for a while, Tango 2016, because I've grown up in Nyeri, a small town, kind of feels. So I've always been a country boy. So um, I think uh, I took time off from home to the city. That's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. But um, eventually I had to go back because there's a lot of peace and tranquility and my creative juices kept on flowing all the time. And plus, I think I'm more instrumental than just a, a musician. I have other ideals of life that I want to practice, you know, like um, conservation and all that stuff. So I can only be practical with all my other ideas that help my music take different turns and inspires my music. So they all feed each other. Um, that's why it works out so well. Hey, hey, you're such a great speaker. Ah, Santi. Napena tukusikio kiongea. Anineza indele ya tukuongea. Nato ujanza kuimbo kimba. Hey, sasa yo ni momonyoko wa maneno. Okay, so you sing for me kidogo. There's this song we were talking about right now. Yeah. Joka ka hora, notige goma. No guanyang and no good tiga ugifo. Tumware ni kore, no to hey go tire. Tumware ni kore, no to hey go tire. That means uh, there's um pretty ladies around us, but there's no boys. That's what it says. <laughs> But you're saying it so romantically. Yeah, though. I think that's the beauty of language and music, as you said, about how I tend to render myself creatively on songs, the bouncing effect, mm. the feeling. Um, I think I described it before in a, an interview um, that um, I think it, it just, it's, it's my innate creative stamp, I would say, because it comes from a lot of styles that I grew up listening to. A lot of Lingala music, I think I've mentioned that, a lot of, country music mm. and um of course vernacular music as well because kikuyu pop you know was really instrumental in in our kenyan music background and mm. history so all that just is a huge melting pot and to add on to that um i went to high school at style boys so music was really huge there mm. um i learned a lot immensely actually most of the part of the band that we play with today are my classmates from high school so really yeah we still that's work amazing. together, yeah, the whole lot. Hendrik, I see him working with Saudi Soul now, yeah, and it's amazing seeing all the growth and 
bado tunaendelea okay trying to showcase the best i want to talk about your big break that is getting noticed by such a legendary producer like Musioka yes you know and Musioka deciding to sign you to his label mm. i think that is where a lot of us discovered you and we continue to discover you and your sounds mm-hmm. he's producing you and together with the decimators tell me about that moment like where did you meet Musioka um, did you know already of him before you met him no um interestingly not ni nilianza ku record in in year you know it was i'm fresh off high school so i'm trying to figure out now all these years i've been like i want to leave school and become the next black justin bieber or something yeah. um <laughs> cuz I, i i had very many western influences but um that's how i learned cuz i taught myself how to sing so it was mainly from mimicking chris brown bruno mars yeah. plus all the other influences i talked Shabba about Hans. kenya brenda farsi shaba i came to learn about shaba from siox I wasn't actually singing reggae until I met Msyox which is very interesting you know like Whoa. he pushes me out of my comfort Whoa. zone so it, it's not something that I Whoa. did for a long time because I actually said Shaba ranks because of your style I know like, I know that. it's yeah. so it's it's something we laugh about every time we have conversations about music cuz yeah yako generation ngine so sometimes he mentions people and I'm just like crickets uh, who's that and he's like you don't know it's so funny because I'm in the WhatsApp of the people of the other generation hey hello don't even tell me some young kids don't know Shaba ranks so didn't know Shaba ranks I I like bet that. you try someone who's like um <laughs> 15 years old <laughs> ask them about shabarang so be like who do you mean i mean shabba 69 takashi wow but that's a really nice collaboration then you have with mosioka for so, him to be able to get out some of those elements and sounds from yes. you that you maybe previously didn't already see yourself singing like that because... oh, but i think um that's the beauty of being a creative who's open to working with other creators because yes, you yes, feed off yes. from each other's energy mosioka also produces very different music because we're with him and we inspire him in different ways yeah. you know he keeps on evolving he's been at it yes so i i the think the music he's producing now is yes. not sounding like the music he was producing yeah, you know what evolving. five, 10 years exactly. ago we're evolving together and i think um he, we're still very passionate about it at the end of the day it's about the passion as well because mm. he'd easily be like oh i make enough money to feed myself off this music doing other stuff other than giving new yes, music yes, to the world. Yes, yes, correct. So it's um it's also uh, an inspiration and passion that goes be- in behind that. That's why we've been at it for so long, you know. Yeah, and so how did you How we met, meet yes. and you know get to the signing? Nilikuwa na record uko most of the guys who were recording with me are our Wakurino brothers. So Really? Yeah, you know, a normal studio in Nyeri, you wouldn't find Msioka studio in Nyeri. So I just want to get started out. I'm just like mtanza hapa. So let me go to a studio in Naskeko pale Nyeri town. Uh see at least get the feel of being in a booth and hearing how I sound on a yes. track because I'd never been in a studio before. Um so um recorded a few The thing is I'd always been writing songs since I was nine. You know, just scribbling. I told you I started as a rapper. Bucks Bricks was my name as a rapper then. So nine. What was your name? Bucks Bricks, because it's Buxton is my. That's what they call me in Ushago. It was just like <laughs> yes, bricks, because I'm laying them up, stacking them up. You know. Nice. <laughs> so, um, but eventually I learned. I I just. I think music is an um. I get it from also my family because my mom's side is pretty much. My 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 grandfather had a lyric book even when he was in his 50s 60s mm. you know he finds a new song that he likes so he'll want to write the words mm. down and keep it in his little book so oh, i wow. think it was in, intrinsic as well so um msioka ali ni jo kati ni makuja nairobi now for campus cuz now it was like okay my break is over i need mm. to go to school now so i joined campus at uh Nairobi University and then that's when I found a studio that I could work around you know just continue the same thing yes learn how to work myself in a studio at, from a raw to a finished product you know so um, found a guy called Rob who'd marketed his studio so amazingly i thought 
Timberland has like a branch somewhere in Umoja. <laughs> in Umoja. Eh? I make uh, nice pictures of how the studio looks. And I was just like, this is in Umoja. I'm definitely going to check it out. But uh, I go there and it was uh, the same humble beginning I'd been working with Nyeri. Yes. But the difference was I felt like he was more he was paying more attention to what i'm doing cuz there it was like i'm not i'm i'm bringing new music that's exactly. not really the main uh staple of, yeah. that the producer is working with so yes. he doesn't really pay that much yeah, attention yeah, yeah. so you don't really get to even see what those projects become okay. you just be like oh i'll learn I'll, I'll learn or i'll find someone else who could do it so i come to nairobi find robert who's setting up a studio business and i tell him unajua hata mimi niko na ngoma tracks kadha ni record uko nyeri you want to hear ni 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 i was just like oh i like your voice uh huh so this is a new studio and i think you're talented and you're a good person that i could work with you mm-hmm. come over just use my space as your practice and whatever comes out of it is what we use to to brand this the studio or just okay. like you know get new customers mm-hmm. coming like oh unataka rnb excuse me to make a stuff like that yes. you get mm, so i'd already been diverse even by that time i was writing r&b heavily more mm-hmm. r&b but not really writing swahili so that is something i was Watching learning on. yes in the background mm-hmm. so by the time i met msiox i had a finished swahili song so i'd always been big in wanting to use to maximize the the gifts that i would say language is you know a big um part of how i look at music in terms of how much you can do with it there's melodies you can create with vernacular languages that don't really sound the same with other language or whatever True. so as an artist you know you just use those tools so um, recorded a few demos jainson robert my friend was fixing his mark computer in westlands abato and then they had the same repair guy with msyoka so what happens is the repair guy tells jainson oh you actually have a client who is really big in the field that you want to get into share this contact and so i don't know what happened but all i know is robert had an exchange with msyoka it was send him some of the stuff we'd been working on at the studio and msyoka was immediately like i need to meet this guy so that's oh how we God. met oh my god what a beautiful serendipity story yes that's how i met msyoka i remember i auditioned for him in a parking lot oh in ridgeways cuz it was go like looking for him no no i hadn't oh funny thing huh? i i told him two years later i told him funny thing is before i even knew who you are i'd sent an email to decimal records <gasps> asking them oh cuz it looked really well set up you know the website and everything yeah. I was like i'd like to know cuz of my disappointment now i wanted to work with more yes. professional people so he was one of the people i emailed and we like and was just inquiring about what it takes to record at his studio how much i would need and stuff mm. like that but you know is he gets so many emails all the of time course, he probably of course, of didn't course. even see it so but um i think it's the fruits of wanting to really get something and chase wow. it and that brought our paths together gee that's yeah. a beautiful story mm-hmm. and so now from 2016 that's about 2016 midway that's when we started working with nsyox had a few sessions you know just to get the vibe of the place and him mm-hmm. to get to know me it wasn't yeah. much about now we're going to start working he just wanted to learn who i was mm. creatively and i the same you know i hadn't been in that professional setup before so i also needed time to look around and learn a few things and i mean it just took off from there you know he kept and on making music and then when when he now produced you know the first music that came out leo yeah. the first music when you with, had it yes Oh my goodness immediately <laughs> i knew my my troubles were solved you know cuz before i met msyox i had a thing i'm i'm very critical with how i want things to sound right so my biggest problem with why i never had any music out but had recorded over 30 songs before i met msyox is just because they didn't cut it for me quality wise you know so just like nah let but them what when is your birthday 
I'm a July person. Seventh. So sixth, you're 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 what's July. your sign? I'm a cancer. Okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't know cancers are like that. That's like a Virgo behavior. Uh no, it's also cancer strong, you know. Oh, okay, I don't know. But I think it's very cancerish as well. To, okay. To have that inner perception of what yeah. you want. So um what happened is when we recorded Leo, I was I'm so glad that now I can only focus about writing good music and not r- trying to figure out if I'm going to mix this part for myself. Oh, yeah. Because I'd started learning how to produce. I was you in production. You start because you're like, I've recorded so many times mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and nothing is coming yes. out. So I got to learn how to do it the way I want it to sound. Exactly. And when when it happened, when we had the song Leo, it just sounded exactly how I wanted it to sound. Really? And I was just like, you know what? This is a sign. I mean... Now it's go time. You're Let's like, I think we're, we are a match made in heaven. We can work yes, together. Yes, exactly. This can work. Yep. I didn't have to say much. It was just like, hey, get in the booth, do your <laughs> thing. He knows what to do. And it's like, and help me throughout the, along the way. Um, honestly, I think that's what, that's why we're still making music. Mm. that, And we still get inspired up to date. Because nice. it's very mm. genuine how we met. It's, it's music brought us together. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. So, Part of the decimators head honchos is um, Bonai. Yes. Bonai um, of P-Unit. Mm-hmm. And having met P-Unit, you know, interacted with each one of them, I find Bonai to be kind of the most grounded. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And also he's very, um, he, he has a business mind. Yes. Um, and he can take on that very serious role where mm-hmm. it's like, hapa simches, wapa ni business, ama sasa ama... Yes. executive and i'm not that yes. artist yes so uh, what's been the experience working at decimal also with bonai because um, i think him and siox they have a good um balance yes, yes. they do have a good balance um both of them i say i would say have a burning passion also you know i feel like i'm creating with people who are more passionate than the young crop that's coming up that's when you know, like, it's not your ordinary, I just want to make money off of music. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know, yeah, yeah. it's deeper than that. And they started the journey long, long yeah. a while back yes. together. So I think it was also a commitment to both of them. You know what? Let's just see it to the end. And so, funny enough, Concordi, around the same time I was starting to deal with Msioka, Concordi was selling shisha somewhere. That's the story yes. I had. Yes, and, yeah. and met Bonai. And it was just like, yo, yo Bonai, ni, ni, ni. Tami neza roga. Kam roga na kam roga. Na eni mbaya pia. Na even though, eh, mbaya pia sana. So na ukisema ki mrogea pia, akomambia roga kam roga. It reminds me of um, the Decimator song. Uh-huh. Um, Eh, alitaka cocktail, nika mpa cocktail, kumbe mindi cocktail. Yes, you got it. <laughs> eh, ukondaka sambaya. <laughs> Alafu? Stamina ya boys, nina pesa ya mbaba. Stamina ya boys, nina pesa ya mbaba. That's Concordi for you. I'm like, yes. ni nani aliandika he line? That's kina Concordi vibes and Ay. Tosh. And Tosh, the, the guy who's also... On the song, you our friend. You represent the street so nice. And uh, it's like the street lingo, the street yes, vibe. Yes, yes. Um, I love it. Um, I think it's it's just from that energy that we've had. And then over time, all the creatives that we've met, we've it's introduced like a, them to like words. Exactly, we've introduced them to new words and stuff that they continue to use and stuff. And we, all of a sudden, everyone's using it. And we're like, oh. Cool to see that how that's how you change culture, yeah. you know. Because um, I I heard in one of the interviews with Aaron Aaron Rimbui yeah. with you. Okay. He called you a uh, culture builder, and that's you know I'm always uh, DMing you, telling you, you know, you go. Yo, thank you so you show, much. Showcasing thank your you beauty so much and everything. For your very kind words and coming from such an artist who I. Respect Jui a hundred percent and two hundred percent. It means everything. Because I'm I'm yes. you're such an artist. There are so many people who get into the industry because they want to be famous or because they want to mm. get girls, yes. and they would never even leave the city to go outside. They'd be like, oh yeah. no, I cannot be away from the clubs or uh-huh. something. So uh-huh. I also have a lot of respect for you to decide like I'm gonna be an artist, but I'm yeah. gonna live in my 
own yes, tranquility yes. and peace and yeah. also do what I want to do with the farming and all that. I think um, it's it's not even a, a privilege. It's it's a necessity for an artist to mm. be able to know how to channel their creative energy. When you have mm. that block, sometimes it's not just because you're out of ideas. Mm. Change your environment a little and mm. you'll be inspired by new things. And yeah. so... Um, it's part of who I am also. I because there's people that I'd, I'd tell to visit me. Hey, Munakuja. I said, Hey, Shida Brian. But I'm not going to king. Yeah, is it? To figure to do some. Me Munakuja. Ah, ah, we caribu sana. You invite Munakuja. Ah, ah, we na. You invite Munakuja. Fresh. To swim up on the nice. dam. Go up. I hope the water is not brown. <laughs> no, it's not brown. It's fresh river water. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> yes, it's fresh river water. <laughs> So, so before um yes. we wrap up, mm. before we wrap up, I want to talk to you about your album, mm. Nadrenaline. Nadrenaline yes. or yes. Nadrenaline? Nadrenaline. Nadrenaline. It, yes. Just an N in front of adrenaline. Yeah. Yes. And just like the, pl- uh, the play of your name, My name Nadra. Nadra and yes. Adrenaline. Yes. Nice. I love that. Mm. And who came up with the title of the album? It just came into my head and I was just like, I texted him socks it, I, as a one word. Yeah. And he immediately knew, oh, that's, oh yes. That's it. And we, it wasn't even a huge conversation. We had no trouble before. I, I think that's the beauty of the album experience or when you're, I see other artists quote it, album mode, you know. There's that feeling of when your creative juices, everything you've been collecting through months mm. or whatever, is now it's time to pour it out, right? So those ideas just come along. Sometimes I told you we had one song in september we had eight songs in december because once you just get the first one it's like the music keeps on coming nice and it's it's the setup i think um we have at studio because we we don't just we're also friends and we're also you know it's it's not just musicianship that's about us so it's easier to create when you have that kind of chemistry Mm -hmm. because um there's less pressure. Yeah. And more, it's more of trying to build each other. That's why most of our songs, it's hard to even know who started that song because I gave the next line and the song was just done. Yeah. You know, there's so much contribution from everyone. It's it's team effort. And Fantastic. I don't, I, I think that's how the industry, that's the future of it. If we're not going to learn how to work with our fellow creatives, then there's no way we can compete. True that. Or have a voice. Mm. Yeah. So I feel like since 2017, you know, since the time I met you, since the signing, um, there's been a lot of work that you all, you all have been putting and you have been personally putting into your brand, your career, your music. Mm-hmm. And now we can finally see what's been happening. Like when the album dropped, when we had it, you know, we're like, okay, I understand. Mm-hmm. Like I see... You know, that vision, you know, when Musioka was like this guy, you know, mm. like when I had the album, I was like, what a broad sounding Spectrums, and spectrum yeah, sound. and, and, yes. and, you know, what a full rounded I, album. That's why I guess I didn't have a name for it. There's, it had to be a new name that yeah. doesn't exist. And so that's why I locked on Adrenaline because nice. it's that effect. It's all over. We're from yeah, Chocolate, like Lingala. Nadra we're from, on Adrenaline. Yes. So... <laughs> All the best, or every little of every of the best from yeah. Nadra. So, so that album, and then the Decimators album, cocktails, uh, cocktails on, on the, the house. house we mm-hmm. just dropped um, December. December. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about this recent um, drops? Like, if you look back at when you started with the Decimal Crew in mm-hmm. 2016, 2017, mm-hmm. till mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. are you happy with the progress? Are you, does it look optimistic, the future? Um, how do you just feel like an artist at this point in time? Um, you know, I'll give an analogy of a canvas, right? Mm. You, you'd put a million artists in front of a canvas. Yes. And all of them would paint something different. Yeah. So that's the same value that I think I place on my art and the art that I bring out through collaboration with other people mm. is I don't really care if it sound if it shouldn't sound like anyone else, you know, 
should be my creativity. Mm. So if you look at the trajectory of music before and now, it, what changed is I became more of myself in the music because before it was like, oh, he's just as good as he can hit those notes yeah. like Bruno. He yeah. Can hit, on Motwana. Now it's, now it's hard for me to compare it to anyone other yes, than yourself. Yes, and I think that's the same as with a group, you know, because we was like, if we just, as unique artists, it means your work will be unique. If you put the work in, it means you're going to be successful or get the mm. dividends of the work. So all we did was just continue to work and not look at what's happening around, just to use the, the resources around us because mm. I think we're in a country that is the potential is so magnanimous for what we can be in terms of culture, music, sports and everything but the artists um, it's not complaining time if you ask me mm. it's try it's time to prove that you really love the art and and get through that tough time by just the art mm. If I feel like all the greatest music that's ever been out has very personal reasons behind it. And I think that's something with art. It has to be very personal, how you bring it out. So that's what change, that's what changes as well. Because in the beginning, it's just like, um, I'll sing. But now I, I feel like I own the song. That's amazing. That's you know? a really great thing. So, so in other words, you feel you've come more into your own mm, space. Yes. Own space, you're more confident, you're more happy with the product. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. Because um I if you tell me about if you talk about decimator music, I challenge anyone to go out there and look for anyone to be like oh, it's the same thing. Yeah. So it's not. Even this new album sounds completely different. Yes. Yeah. Um so yeah, the new album called Cocktail in the House um was a long time coming because um before Starting on adrenaline mm -hmm. to look at me on the cocktails in the house, really. But then we put it on hold mm -hmm. so that we can finish my yes. album and then have more time and ample time to now have to, you know, uh, go for our excursions and record mm. like we always do. So, um, it's, a, it's an amazing product, everyone's grown on it, it's different, it's different. It's us you're, challenging you're ourselves. I'm record. rapping in the record. Bax bricks and a chumbuleki dogo. Because I was like, I think that's natural rapping. Yes. I thought so. Uh, mm, I was right. And I think it's going to be more even of that, you know, just expressing yourself freely. Nice, you know, when, nice. when I'm she was sitting. When she was just sitting. Yeah, it's coming. I'm ready. It's I, didn't, coming. I never saw that coming and didn't think that of you. Yes. But now that we've had this conversation and mm -hmm. you seem so confident to express yourself in different ways, yes. why not? Why not? I why mean, not? It's art. Yes. You know, so. Fantastic. Yes. So as we wrap up, I want you to look at your camera and give oh. Um, oh. the people listening and watching. Give them five tips to becoming a good songwriter. Uh, five tips to becoming a good songwriter. First is study what you love. Not listen, study what you love. And then you'll learn what goes into bringing out those emotions and mm. everything that you feel about that song. Mm -hmm. It's not about... Uh, it's not about looking, reinventing the wheel, mm. just study what you love. And then in there, you will find a pattern of what the writers are doing, words they're using, stuff like that. That's one, right? Mm -hmm. Study what you consume. Okay. Don't just listen through it. Um, second, I'd say, find yourself in a creative circle. Don't isolate yourself. Mm -hmm. Even if you do, always make sure you can always go back to a circle. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when you need to tap into more inspiration or help others with their work, that is very refreshing mm -hmm. for for someone, for a writer. Not not always working on your stuff, even helping others yes. work on their stuff. You learn a lot on the way. Um, number three, uh -huh. number three, I'd say the worst mistake you could ever do is try to 
not give yourself time. Mm. Don't be, I want this song out next month. You know, be very patient with yourself because trust me, some really great ideas come when you've hammered one idea so many times. Mm. If you re- if you rewrite a song, I mean, I rewrite songs so many times. And when that when I learn how to do that, accept that art can change form at whatever time, is when you start to become freely expressive. You're like, nothing is cast in stone when it comes to putting a brush on a canvas, mm. you know? So that's three. Number four, um, hmm. Find something else to do other than write music. Something that you love as much or at least at average par with writing music. Write something else, not just music. Write poems. Write, use your head to come up with words. Because the words, <laughs> yes, just do that. Freestyle, you know. Ukiwa kwa shawa, never stop doing that. Freestyle always, you know, create spontaneously. Mm-hmm. And so I'd say number five is always take um, enjoy what enjoy your product. Mm-hmm. Never shelf it. You know, I could learn something from Leo if I went back again right now and listened to it. Yeah. So never throw away your. Uh, lyric books or whatever. Every information you put down is a resource. So, how your trajectory. Always go back to day one and see how far you come. And trust me, there's good ideas that you thought were not worth it. But now you have the, the, um, the prowess after developing yourself to be able to breathe life into it. So nothing is wasted if it's an idea record them. Uh, I saw an interview once um, because we're big on interviews. Sometimes even when we just want to just chill and be like, let's just put a documentary and just watch it in studio about other people uh, who are in the same journey as we are in or different or just... So it was about... I think it was Pharrell saying the drive is just it could be the difference between your success and your failure is just picking up your phone right now we're we're very privileged we have smartphones you can record ideas like on a daily every hour so maximizing on that will make you more efficient but what is laziness laziness is not recording those ideas Mm. simply as an artist is not taking initiative to make sure you can set the first building blocks mm. and carry it on from there. Because I hear people saying, oh, Nataka Kwenda Studio Nini, Nadra, tell me what to do about this. I'm like, um, first of all, I don't really take you that seriously because don't tell me you've been writing music. It's one year later and you've never entered the door of a studio. Mm. You know? It doesn't have to be that you're paying. It could be like, I want to see what goes on in here. Yeah. If that's where I'm going to make magic from. You know, yeah. the journey starts with you taking that foot and, and being in those spaces that things are happening. Otherwise, it's hard to help people who are not as inspired to help themselves, you know. So that's what we're doing wrong as, art, uh, as artists. Uh, I'd say that because I see it with people who want to work with the people I work with. Mm. And the biggest problem is the initiative is not convincing enough from their part. Because if it's really something you love with all your might people find themselves going to watch football. You know, when they see a on a safari rally mm. and you think you want to express yourself with music and never been in a studio. It's also, there's, there's always, you, you need to know there's, you're going to put on, you're going to put in a lot of your effort as well. Mm. And this times it's going to take from you. This times it's going to give you life. I love it. I love it. I love everything you're saying because... Um, for such a talented artist, you know, you got the voice, you got the sound, you got the writing and all that. Like when somebody listens to your um, album, 
they might think like you just get into the studio and get out. Mm. But yes, you do get in and get out. Mm-hmm. But in between the time you get in and yes. get out, there's a lot of going mm-hmm. back, you know, rewriting, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. fixing. And that's why mm-hmm. I love this show. And that's why I love speaking to, you know, artists to explain the process. Mm-hmm. Um, the process is a journey mm-hmm. and you got to trust it mm-hmm. and you got to give it the opportunity to grow 100%. and you have to grow with it and you have to learn from it. Yes. You have to learn from your mistakes or from the other track that you recorded and come back and listen. Mm-hmm. I love that, that sometimes you also take time to just sit and watch other documentaries and learn from that. Yes. I really love that. I hope somebody's listening, um, yeah. some artists are watching and this is inspiring them to get more into their creative zone mm-hmm. and to know that it's not every day that something just happens, Mm-mm. but Sometimes it takes a good amount of time to create yeah, magic. Well. Yes, it does. <laughs> Give it time and the magic will come nice. for sure. Nice. Mm-hmm. Asante Sana. That's where we're wrapping off VIP Access this week with the amazing Brian Nadra. I'm wishing you the best Thank in you your so career, much. Um, at your farm. It's a, and yes. uh, we're going to come Yo, swim. <laughs> 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 <Tumakuja kuku swimming. laughs> <laughs> Kule managu, tufanya yu. And Na next time, <laughs> managu pia uko nazo. Mbuka kienyeji, <laughs> si tumambio tuwache hizi, nini, GMO. <laughs> yes, we've been told to leave yeah. those. Ebu ambia fans something, kama before tuende, wambia, um, I thank you maybe for the support. Yeah, mine is just, uh, I, I mean, sometimes I feel overprivileged as an artist, in this sense, like, um, I've been in a zone where, I'm allowed to create, freely express myself, and the people give me a listening ear, you know? Because it's not automatic that whatever idea you conceptualize... Right, so for me, it's automatic if it's you. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could put it like that, but uh, you should, you, I, I, let me let you, lo- let you know that a lot of work goes into it, like thinking, what what I need or am I, is this just a song for me? Nah, so that's why I keep on doing what I'm doing because it's like a drug. I also took a pill of adrenaline the first time I saw the reaction. I mean, Leo was my first song, yeah. right? And it was, as I said, at par with the production I wanted and everything. And it got to BBC charts. So yeah, you remember? Yeah, on Destination Africa. Yes, uh, with DJ, DJ Edu. Edu. Yeah, and so that was just like, oh, from here, if this is... If I put work in it and people love it, then, I mean, there's no going back. So that's why I do it, because I feed off the energy. Everyone gives a lot of support. So you're saying thank you. I'm saying thank you. Hey, you're such an artist. You're saying thank you. You're saying thank you. You're saying thank you. You're saying thank you. He wrote a song. Yes. He wrote a poem to mm. you guys just to say thank you. Yes. I, I appreciate you and I love you a lot. And you know what? Um, an adrenaline, who knows what's coming next. And I'll always be inspired if you keep on listening. Nice. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Um, this is the amazing Brian Nadra. Next week, Takua more fire. Ivo, Ivo, too. Ivo, Ivo, Kaende. Facebook. VIP access. VIP access with Aniko on Africa Loud.